the establishment of IITs in India should be considered as one of the most significant factors in India's journey to prosperity. It should be quite reasonable to say that IITs are one of the finest contributions to the world by modern India. The IIT Alumni Impact Study 2008 revealed that IIT alumni have an annual revenue responsibility of the magnitude of 1 trillion US dollars globally. In 2017, a study by Sage revealed that IITs are the fourth largest producer of unicorn startups in the world. For decades, India's most prestigious IITs have been playing an instrumental role in touching and transforming millions of lives globally. Uh, it's a significant part and, and I think after Stanford and MIT, uh, IIT significantly contributes a lot to this ecosystem. In terms of if you look at every venture capitalist in the valley surely has a significant IIT alumni onto it. Uh, you see the entrepreneurship community, they have a significant IIT community, uh, a significant part of IIT alumni in it. So there is a lot of contribution to technology and worldwide, right? So, and we're proud of it. And you know, when you have uh, uh, when you have the CEO of Google, which is one of the most influential companies in our generation, uh, you know, having an IIT alumni as a CEO, uh, and not just the CEO. If you look at Google, all the functional heads, that is, the engineering heads, where the research, actual research is going on, actual work is going on, pretty much is dominated by IITians and headed by IIT alumni. If you want to understand India's future, if you want to know what 21st century India will contribute to the world, or if you want to know where some of the biggest earth-shaking ideas of the future are going to come from, you should begin your journey at India's IITs. IIT Kharagpur is where it all began. IIT Kharagpur is the first IIT. Being the first IIT, it was mandated and over the years, it has developed what is known as the IIT system. The IIT system is probably one of the finest brands that has come out of independent India. So IIT Kharagpur has been the mother, the first IIT, the eldest siblings of all the IITs, and has been the driver of change in technical engineering education all over the period of its time of existence. So it has been the change maker of India. The government of India recognizes IIT Kharagpur as an institute of national importance. It was founded in 1951 and it was the first engineering institute established after India's independence. Interestingly, it is built on the site of Hitchley detention camp where many freedom fighters were detained during the British rule. Who would have thought that these cells in which Indian freedom fighters were held would end as a launchpad for some of the best brains in the world? Google Sundar Pichai, Berkshire Hathaway's Ajit Jain and K. Radhakrishnan, the men who took India to Mars, all have one thing in common, and that is IIT Kharagpur. The campus, which is spread across more than 2,000 acres and has 24 halls of residence, is the largest among all IITs. The institution's diverse and transdisciplinary academic portfolio is very impressive. For example, when the first largest sponsored project from the defense came to IIT Kharagpur, the first setup of sponsored research and industrial consultancy, the first setting up of a science and technology entrepreneurship park on campus in the early 80s. Setting up of the first undergraduate programs in key areas, biotechnology, computer science, industrial engineering and the like. IIT Kharagpur has almost all disciplines from agriculture to nanoscience. And that is what makes IIT Kharagpur's contribution unique. Secondly, on about 50 years of existence, when the first mandate of providing excellent engineering education to Indian Indians was more or less standardized, IIT Kharagpur decided to charter the new dimensions in the IIT system. We set up 
the first school of management. We set up the first school of intellectual property law. Then we set up the first school of medical science and technology. And now we are going to set up a school of cultural and liberal arts. The Institute has a long tradition of having a holistic approach towards education. The Reiki Center of Excellence for the Science of Happiness was established to enrich the lives of students through holistic wellness. Sunday is a new initiative which is dedicated to exploring the interconnection between science, culture and heritage. Professor Joy Sen is the principal investigator. What are we going to do in the future? Because most of the things we work on the future are things from the past. We keep on improving them and we keep on improving them. So we need a process, which is science, through which we need to look at heritage. You know, it's, like a, it's like a lens, you know, through a lens you look at science, uh, heritage itself through science. And when you do that, in heritage you find out some of the basic things, you know, you find out uh, deeper connections, which science does not know. But science helps to bring that out. So when you get those out, you put that into science and science improves. In the past, many initiatives in Darien, fisheries, irrigation and drainage, water harvesting, plant genetics, soil science and agronomy were undertaken under the leadership of Professor A.C. Pandya. He had a tenure of more than 20 years as the chairman of the Department of Agricultural Engineering. The objective of any technological advancement in agriculture should be to increase farmers' incomes, and make their lives easier. Professor Maheshwari is committed to this cause. Recently, for the last 15 years, in fact, uh, we are also uh, outreaching our technology which we have developed in various aspects of farm machinery, land water or food processing to farmers. So every year we have Agri Expo. And in that it was three days affair where we tell our technology to these uh, farmers. We also learn from them as to what is their requirement. And it, it has uh, reached the farmers so by that way. We are in a position to give about 20% of mechanization in this part of the country. Even near neighboring uh, uh, states like Assam and Bihar also people join when the farmers come here. As the mother of all IITs, the institute has shouldered its responsibility very well. Whenever required, it has stood for the nation. Even though the campus is in a rural setting, its industry collaborations with the top international agencies are very impressive. It has been in the forefront of developing a lot of aspects which are considered core to nation building. In terms of nation contribution to the nation, from the first early days when rice was being developed in this country in the green revolution one lakh rice mills were developed based on the technology developed by iit kharagpur all over this country subsequently over the years our technology has been in india's atomic energy in india's strategic sectors of space strategic sectors of defense and then in all the public sectors of transportation, of uh, healthcare, and everywhere else. IIT Kharagpur even continues to make landmarking contributions to the people of India, the latest being the National Digital Library of India. This has been developed by IIT Kharagpur. Today, in two years, it has more than 17 million content available free for every citizen of the country in 20 languages. Similarly, we have been the change maker in bringing internationalization into the country. We run the National Global Initiative of Academic Networks, which brings international scholars from all over the world to all over the country. From the health benefits of green tea to the Indian Railways interlocking system that protects trains from conflicting movements, the recent inventions and innovations from IIT Kharagpur are having a major impact on day-to-day -day life. If you look at the first radar and communication technologies, the first semiconductor research that came out, a lot of this is embedded in IIT Kharagpur. But in recent times, we have used a very, very advanced techniques to discover 
India's rich heritage. We have shown by optical luminescence techniques that the Indus Valley civilization is 3,000 years older, 2,000 years older than before. We have used advanced technologies to find lost rivers. We have found the city of Varanasi. Today, we are able to scientifically explain all the natural issues in the city of Varanasi. When you come to inventions, we look at nanoscience and technology. The whole concept of nanofiltration, the technology of nanofiltration, which is so costly, has been done at extremely low cost at IIT Kharagpur. And the same technology can be used today for water purification, for low cost uh, dialysis, and also for cold sterilization. We have got very, very advanced nanomechanics, microfluidics technology, which we are using to build some of the top inventions like plant on a chip and other things where we will be able to miniaturize certain things that have not been done even in the world before. In terms of academic curricula, research and students' amenities, the institution is making continuous progress. It has also started to give more participatory control to students whose thoughts and feedback are now influencing the system. When I took up the directorship of the institution, we realized that we have to move in several directions. The first direction that we needed was putting in a new flexibility and dimension in our academic curriculum. Based on that, we have been able to introduce several new things in our curriculum, including the concept of micro specializations, which makes it extremely easy to, for students to move across disciplines, learn new things. Second thing is our focus on research. We have invested hugely on research and we have defined 10 domains on which we are focusing to do world-class research. This research being world-class is such that we will enable people from all over the world to come to India to do research and that has started. And these 10 domains are now being highlighted world over as very important domains for India. And if it is done well in India, it will be done in the world. The third is to build world-class infrastructure. Academics today requires world-class infrastructure and laboratories. So we have acquired equipment and we have acquired and made buildings and infrastructure that are going to be world-class. Today we have an, a, a complex for uh, classroom complex, where air-conditioned classroom complex, where simultaneously 10,000 students can study together in different classes. We have built advanced research facilities in the institution. We are now building two or three more very advanced facilities, including a 433-bed advanced research medical, hosp medical hospital for research. So this is going to be an absolutely unique thing in the IIT system. We are building a new research park in Kolkata. That is also getting completed by now. And finally, we have had the alumni give back to the institution in a major, major way. Yes, it is true that the global impact of IIT Kharagpur cannot be understood without understanding the impact that its alumni have made globally. Under Mr. Sarin's leadership, Vodafone grew to become a global brand with more than 300 million customers and had a market capitalization of $150 billion. But I think IIT was the first place where intellectually I grew tremendously uh, into who I am today. Uh, and so IIT played a very major role in my, in my development. So what is the biggest accomplishment of your life? Oh, I, you know, I, there are many accomplishments that I'm proud of. Um, I'm proud of the fact that I was the chief executive officer of one of the largest companies in the world, Vodafone. 
I am uh, very proud of the fact that I won the BC Roy gold medal at IIT Kharagpur. I'm very proud of the fact that even though I'm an American citizen, I was given a knighthood by the Queen. I'm very proud of the fact that I have a fantastic family. Uh, I have a wife and two children and a son-in-law. So frankly, I'm very blessed. Mr. Gopalakrishnan has served as executive director of Tata Sons and has held key positions in several multinationals. In his third innings, he has evolved as a prolific writer who is now working on creating future entrepreneurs by mentoring startups and by being an inspirational management guru. The campus activity was very rich, enormously rich. There were social activities, there were debates, there was drama, there was music, there was sports. We were a world within the world. And you took part in all of those and it gave you a great deal of intellectual and emotional enrichment. And that's a very useful thing to have in developing the other part of your brain because engineering and science tends to develop the left side of the brain. And I think in those respects, IIT Kharagpur was a foundational experience for me, something I would always be grateful for. Mr. Gupta graduated from IIT Kharagpur in architecture and won the silver medal for standing second in the entire institute. That was in 1970. Turning point in uh, my life really was uh, being selected for IIT Kharagpur. That was absolutely the turning point. Uh, I come from a village uh, in Haryana. I'd never lived in a city or gone outside of uh, my little village. And uh, getting selected for IIT was a big, big change. A few decades later, he decided to return to Kharagpur, but the plan was to give back to the institution that had given him the platform on which he was able to perform pioneering work in the USA. At that time, about 10 years ago, uh, I wrote an email to IIT that uh, I like to do something really big and positive. What can I do? And uh, so the director of IIT at that time uh, Mr. Acharya was going to visit New York City in, in just a few days. And, and my office was in New York. So we made plans to meet. And, uh, and within 10, 15 minutes, we decided what, uh, what could be done. And that was, I asked him that I want to do something. And I want to do something perhaps in my discipline. My discipline was uh, architecture, and, uh, and so he said, well, uh, he just threw out one word, infrastructure. Can you start a school of infrastructure at IIT? I said, fine, great. And that was the end of it, really. And then we just worked on what more we can do or how do we go about doing it. Uh, I worked in practically every division in the company for a long time. And then finally, I was the president of United Airlines. And uh, after that, when 9-11 happened, <laughs> at that time, I was the president of United. And unfortunately, as a result of the uh, impact of 9-11, all the airlines in the US, whether it's United or American or Delta or Continental, they all declared bankruptcy. So I was caught up in part of that process. Uh, so then I left United, I think in 2004 or so. And uh, I sort of became a bankruptcy expert <laughs> with the airlines. So I advised Air Canada when they declared bankruptcy. I advised US Airways when US Airways declared bankruptcy. And finally, I advised Hawaiian Airlines when they declared bankruptcy. And so my career all along has been in aviation. Highlights of my career span through various countries and through various employers. The major ones being World Bank, uh, United Nations, as well as Parliament of New South Wales. And through the work that I did, you know, which was funded by these organizations, there were major benefits to the community. And in Parliament of New South Wales in Australia, my work involved uh, repealing and 
remaking all the legislation after assessing the cost and benefits. In the course of my career, I've been given various awards, including Distinguished Alumni Award of Columbia University, also the Fellowship of Columbia University. In Australia, I was made a fellow of the prestigious Australian Institute of Management, and finally, the Distinguished Services Award of IIT Kharagpur. IIT Kharagpur was not only an excellent engineering institute, that was of course there, but it also built a person up to be mentally strong and have a stable mind and to survive in any situations. Arjun Malhotra is a well-known industrialist and philanthropist. He co-founded HCL and in 1996, he founded India's first school of telecommunication. I think within how many years, seven years or so, we became the largest computer company in India. And of course, HCL is a known name now. So I did a number of things within HCL. We, we had a reprographics division, we had an instruments division, etc., etc. And then when we decided to take our uh, hardware, especially our multiprocessor Unix machines that we had developed through R&D in India, which were unique, we decided to take them to the US. I went to the US to run that operation. It was called HCL America. It's morphed into what you call HCL Technologies today. Right, it's, uh, I mean, it's multi-billion dollar. I, I don't know where it is right now, but it's a huge company. Employs 120, 130,000 people. In the late 90s, he decided to leave HCL to start his own company, Techspan. He was turning 50, but that did not slow him down. His second innings was equally successful. And so I ended up starting another company, uh, Techspan, which morphed into Headstrong. We started it in 90, late 98, and uh, we sold it to Genpact uh, for 550 million in uh, 2011, early 2011. Parak Havaldar's animation skills were rewarded with an Oscar. On the day of the Oscar, you know, uh, an envelope is open. For the technology side, they can't do justice in one month to evaluate a technology. So the research actually goes on for a year before that. And in that research, they discovered that, yes, I had done some pioneering work. And so they contacted me, they interviewed me uh, two or three times. Uh, but after that, you know, they have their own closed door meetings and, you know, it's a vote based thing. And, and then in January, suddenly it was announced. So it was really nice and uh, it gives me a big sense of responsibility to educate and share my experience with the younger generation so they can benefit from, uh, from, from that experience. According to GFP 2018, India's military is the fourth strongest in the world. Many graduates from IIT Kharagpur have played a key role in some of the most important strategic assets of the country's defense. Uh, after passing out from IIT Kharagpur, I was in the Indian Navy for almost 22 years plus, and I was the commissioning crew of INS Virat, one aircraft carrier, which we brought from UK to India. It was HMS Hermes, which became INS Virat. And in the Navy also, I was in the technical branch, that is the so-called electrical, electronics, computers, everything I was looking after. And after 22 years, I took premature retirement and then became Dean of a University. They, after that, I joined Cisco Systems and I was looking after their defense and e-governance for India and SARC region. I consider myself that I have been very successful as a leader wherever I have been, whether while it was in the Navy or whether as a Dean of the University or the President of the company and now even as a corporate trainer. I have been doing quite well and I feel the foundation was laid at IIT Kharagpur. Till I joined that office, uh, I didn't have a clue that India was seriously making a nuclear submarine. And uh, I suddenly was throttled into heading this design group. 
it was a very small group at that time and i had to build it up uh, to a full cadre full strength so the first assignment given to me was by a scientific advisor to raksha mantri saying that uh, uh we are taking technology transfer from russians and uh, it will be a further concept design so next stage of design and thereafter we'll be doing it ourselves during the time i was in iit we had this uh, disastrous war with china so that sort of i was already into i like the you know technologies related to aeronautics and so on but that china war made me sort of very defense oriented i decided to pick up a career related to the defense research it happened and i joined the defense research and development organization in 1965 and i stuck to it till i retired at the age of uh, 60 starting in the early 70s iit kharagpur graduates have contributed immensely to the development and skyline of miami the architectural contribution of avinash gupta in hospitals was quite significant metro rail high rise buildings naval housing or downtown planning IITians were involved in some of the most dynamic projects worth billions of dollars and able to touch and transform millions of lives. Partha Bora has been a licensed professional civil engineer in the state of Florida since 1974. The One Biscayne Tower was one of the iconic projects he was involved in. At that time, it was the tallest structure in downtown Miami. What are the most significant projects that you were involved in? One project that I really remember a lot that took a big team effort was the Miami Metro Rail project. It was a 21-mile system uh, designed in the late 1970s, and uh, we had got uh, fed, uh, federal funding from the U.S. government. At that time, uh, San Francisco was also building uh, their their own transit system, so it was a joint venture of five five companies. IIT also gave me a very good education um, from the perspective, especially in architecture. Uh, it's a very generalized, solid, fundamental education. Uh, there are a lot of architecture schools that are famous. They they have a very philosophical. a uh, narrow perspective in architecture and they teach students very narrowly focused dogmatic um, philosophy and i think i'm fortunate that archi- architecture in iit kharagpur did not focus on any specific narrow scope we all come together rich poor from all walks of life and one of the unique things about iit throughout our stay there and even to this date is no one ever is concerned about the wealth of the other person but they are all like family i can pick up a phone and call anyone from any one of the iits and i'm confident the other person will call and say where are you i'm coming to pick you up It is not just the Indian military that utilizes the talent of IITians. The list of IIT KGPN's clients also includes the US Navy. Because of lot of involvement with the uh, US Navy and customizing their products, we k- were given a chance to design Orsnet operational readiness test system. which was used by US Navy for missile defense so we provided them almost 100 of those systems and um, and they are working fine uh, and we met all their requirements a continuous engagement with alumni in a comprehensive alumni network is significant for IIT Kharagpur no it's not only about a fond memories and the emotional connection with the university Alumni participate in the development of the institution through fundraising and various professional mentoring programs which positively affect the employability of the students and give them a competitive edge. 
A properly engaged alumni network functions as a strong supporter base of those who are truly loyal to the university. Additionally, this helps alumni in their own professional networking. Exhausting international tours like this are truly dedicated to the overall benefits of the institution. IIT Kharagpur alumni have been IIT Kharagpur's brand ambassadors. IIT Kharagpur alumni have also been the first um, in the IIT system to contribute back to IIT. Today we have more than 10 centers of excellence funded by the alumni and each of them was a harbinger of change. Whether it is the first law school, whether it's the first management school, whether it's the first telecom school, first school of bioenergy, first school of infrastructure, the advanced VLSI lab, or giving computing facilities at the rooms of every student, or building the center for AI research, or uh, building the uh, leadership academy, or uh, building a new center for happiness, or uh, building a new petroleum engineering center, they have been at the forefront of doing this. It is a usual practice for many alumni to meet at the IIT Kharagpur team social gatherings, which are held regularly. Today, Arvind Jain and Ramnad Mani are participating in a small event in which a delegation from IIT Kharagpur has come to solidify the bond with former students. When I joined uh, Alcan, the great Canadian aluminum company in Zurich, Worked there for a year, then was invited to work at the headquarters in Montreal. And there I got an opportunity to do the major mergers and acquisitions. Uh, the last one uh, of being $40 billion in scope. IIT Kharagpur was uh, is best described as a melting pot. Everyone who comes in by definition is bright, otherwise you won't get past the entrance exam but you're bright in different ways in different cultures. And the melting pot effect is really dramatic. Uh, what you find is uh, there are aspects of Indian culture that you didn't know about, that there are people of uh, different diversities who are there. And that's the place where you form uh, lifelong friendships. Uh, we were in a very close type of society in our school days. Uh, when we went to Kharagpur, I mean, that vision opened up. We had lots of friends from all over the country and actually different cultures, different ways of you know, behaving. And I think it had a pretty big impact on us. Uh, I started the Chennai chapter and uh, I've been part of the IIT Alumni Foundation right from the beginning. And I was uh, president of the IIT Foundation India for about six years. And presently now I am the chairman of uh, Pan IIT India. There is a very strong uh, group we have here in, in the Bay Area. It's called the IIT Bay Area Alumni. And um, we have close to 11,000 uh, people from IITs, from all the IITs. And it's, um, you, this is where you get to actually meet several other IITians who, from, you know, who have basically started companies and taken it to Nasdaq and gone public and it's absolutely amazing to see the kinds of people here. International institutions are increasingly engaging with IIT Kharagpur for joint collaborative research, student exchange programs and dual doctoral programs. Multiple universities from Europe, USA and Australia are being partnered. These efforts are providing the students with a unique learning experience. Internationalization being my biggest focus, IIT Kharagpur over the last few years has realized that it needs to partner with the best in class institutions. I forgot to mention that among the new initiatives, we have started multi institutional academic programs where students stay for some time in another institute and some time in our institute. This has given a completely new experience. We are now building in best-in-class areas, collaborations with the best people. So we've gone to universities, set up MOUs and done this. These efforts are bringing fruits too. Gita Mehta is an Indian-American social entrepreneur who has been living in New York for many years. 
She is an adjunct professor of architecture and urban design at Columbia University. She has played a key role in bringing the two universities together. So the collaboration between IIT Kharagpur and uh, uh, Columbia University has been really exciting um, because I met with the faculty of IIT Kharagpur, the architecture faculty. Uh, the IIT uh, faculty have been just so enthusiastic and supportive of it. So two years ago, we did an amazing project together in on water urbanism in the city of Calcutta and Sundarbans. So our students went from here and then they worked alongside the IIT Kharagpur students. India's rich culture and its spiritual foundational wisdom are its big assets. It is the land which gave birth to pro-environment ancient traditions like Aparigraha. The country has a lot of potential when it comes to utilizing its intellectual heritage and knowledge traditions in sustainable living. IIT Kharagpur has taken a keen interest in that. This is Dr. Pallav Dasgupta. IIT Kharagpur has been his home for decades. He is optimistic about the institution's future on the global stage. We are looking at many of our traditional knowledge and we are trying to connect it with the science initiatives and come up with path-breaking ways at which we can look at the way people live, the way people work, the way people move around. If these impacts are made, then we are going to have a much sustainable, world-leading way of uh, how human beings will live in the future, in harmony with the ecosystem. I actually like one of the uh, videos that you had done in the past on this, uh, uh, about the, the, uh, the oasis in which people can live in harmony with, uh, with nature. And, that is something which is there in our traditional way of living. Today, many former students of IIT Kharagpur hold key global positions in the academic world. My professional career in teaching started back in 1982. I had not finished my PhD at Columbia in 82. I was still working on my dissertation. And in 82, I took up a teaching job at State University of New York at Buffalo. And I stayed there for four years. In 86, I moved to Rutgers and stayed there for three years. And in 89, I joined Fordham. And I've been at Fordham since then. And IIT Kharagpur being the very first IIT at the time when I was there, the faculty is just, just, just uh, uh, second to no other faculty that I can think of um, in all branches, in mechanical and electrical, in all branches of engineering, all disciplines. In the US, the IIT brand is extremely well known. If you tell people they're from IIT, it is superb. And the reason is the technical foundation, the background that got created. Uh, to this day, I oftentimes refer to my lecture notes from IIT Kharagpur when I'm looking at something, some, something fundamental communications or solid state or in the electronics or computer programming. So it has really provided a fantastic educational background for me to do what I have done today. Back in the 50s when IITs were first created, it was generating a lot of uh, talented IITians, but there were not enough opportunities in India. So IIT started looking out of India to learn new technologies or build new products and US became their favorite destination. Early on, they, they identified that entrepreneurship was not very difficult in US and some of them went on and they saw remarkable successes. As you see, today we have a breeding ground of technology talent in the Silicon Valley here and uh, even emulated in New York and Los Angeles and many other locations. Yes, it is true that many IITians have settled abroad and have had a positive impact on many nations. But India remains the biggest beneficiary. The IIT Alumni Impact Study 2008 revealed that close to 71% of the jobs generated directly or indirectly by IIT alumni are in India. 
It is 2019, and India is the fastest growing major economy in the world. According to Standard Chartered's long term forecast, India is expected to become the world's second largest economy by 2030. There is no surprise that more and more IITs are becoming keen to participate in India's journey to prosperity. Anish Reddy graduated from IIT Kharagpur. He co-founded Capillary and he is hoping that the firm will reach $100 million in annual revenue in 3-4 to four years. The decision to stay in India worked well for him. And you know, those four years at IIT, I had done a bunch of research. Uh, I had also done uh, building a few teams and I realized that I had a lot more fun building teams. And that really helped me in taking that call and saying, uh, you know, let's stay back in India and, uh, you know, not go to the US. And, uh, and I think that was the biggest turning point in my career, at least. You know, I think life would have been very different if I had uh, gone to the US and spent more time, uh, you know, and done a master's or a PhD there, as compared to having stayed back in India and uh, built a Asia-focused uh, software product company. In Mr. Chok's career, which spans more than three decades, the foundational values of IIT Kharagpur have played a key role. Creating jobs for Indians in India is something that is close to his heart. Uh, as I work through the IT industry, I think I'm very blessed and fortunate to have worked with firms who I could convince to bring investments into India to create high quality jobs for tens of thousands of engineers. Uh, and I think in the high tech sector, I would consider that to be my small contribution of bringing high value added work so that people could stay back in India, be with their families, look after their parents and help them achieve their social obligations. To my mind, that perhaps is the impact that I have been able to create in society in a very small and humble way, but I consider that to be uh, a small accomplishment. Right from college days, I wanted to be in India and then generate employment and then serve the country okay, by staying back in India. Okay. So the goal remained same. And I wanted to start on my own, but I was hesitating for some time. But suddenly it happened. I mean, the goal was to start on my own. In 1984, Mr. Guha decided to leave a promising career to return to India. In West Bengal, he has been running a world-class air spring manufacturing plant, which has a unique in-house R&D facility. We have a plant in India, a small plant, which makes the only green air spring in the world. All equipment I have in my plant are made in India. A lot of them are made locally in West Bengal in the Howrah area. For instance, our endurance testing machine, which tests the endurance of the railway air spring or its stiffness properties, I could have imported it from Germany or Japan or the US where the FOB cost would have been $3 million. But here, Indian engineers developed it for me. Instead of getting it off the shelf in two months, it took me about four years to get it but the cost was, the landed cost was about one-tenth of the price and it does the same job. We do not use prices to compete with the Chinese, but the price and quality combination, we are knocking the Chinese out of the Indian market and soon we are hope, hopeful that we will start knocking them out of the other markets as well. Mr. Balla is a successful businessman. Small initial capital and early failures could not stop his momentum. So I picked up a small product, automotive filter, made it, and uh, it was a failure. So then slowly I improved it, brought it in line, 
and learned the basics. And that started me off into automotive filter field. And nobody supported my My father was a fairly wealthy man. I asked him for money. He said, I won't give you 500 rupees for business. <laughs> so my mother supported me a little bit, whatever little earnings, whatever little help she could. I started the business and uh, it was a difficult time for me. And uh, then we moved on to industrial filtration, which is more technical in nature, but Automotive filtration is not very technical. So I was competing with all kinds of people. So that is the first lesson I learned. You must compete with somebody bigger than yourself, not smaller than yourself. In the world of architecture, Kamal Sagar is a well-known name. He loves to be the trendsetter. Um, but it's also influenced the way the rest of the industry works. So I think uh, a lot of uh, companies all over the country have seen what we do and have tried to improve their work. I think that's that's been a big impact on uh, on the whole industry and the way they do things, uh, whether it's whether it's design or customer service and the little little details of what we do. Polyplex Corporation Limited has its corporate office in Noida. It is among the world's largest producers of PET films. Its founder graduated from IIT Kharagpur. Mr. Saraf is passionate about his love for the Urdu language. Kharagpur played a very, very important role, especially in terms of providing me a platform, a way of thinking, uh, opening up my mind, and the interaction with such talented students and comrades. That was a big, big factor in my development. Urdu has been my passion since early days, since my youth and I felt there was a big gap in this area where my technical background and my passion and the resources would be of immense use to uh, serve the language and preserve and spread the language. And Dr. Kiran said needs no introduction. For his exceptional contribution to the art for a voluntary movement Spikmakai, he was awarded the Padma Shri by the government of India. No doubt, IIT Kharagpur was, had very good faculty. So we also learned the subjects very nicely. We also got an exposure to the arts because there are a lot of facilities. Being an IIT, lots of facilities. If you wanted to use things, you could use them. We also had a very good humanities department. I remember learning Arms and the Man, you know, by Bernard Shaw. And uh, it was a very nice play, you know, which we all uh, read. So the whole experience of IIT was very, very nice. Very fond memories I have of that experience. In 1958, Mr. Manda did his postgraduate studies at IIT Kharagpur. In 1980, he decided to venture into real estate. He is the man behind these swanky office buildings in Bengaluru and he's also involved in several charitable activities that are run by the Menda Foundation. There was a boom, a projected boom, of uh, offices required for software companies. So we changed our line of construction activity into construction of office spaces from 1999 into a new brand known as RMZ, which is the present brand that we are having, and I am the uh, group chairman of the company. And all these um, buildings which we construct, we don't sell them, we lease them out. We hold it as an asset and lease them out to all the multinational companies. Presently we have over 20 million square feet leased out space, and another 20 million square feet which is under construction we have been involved in a charitable work. Uh, charitable work to start with was giving away scholarships to students. Then about six years ago, we started uh, another venture known as Light for Education. 
The Light for Education program is about giving solar-powered lamps to the students residing in unelectrified or underelectrified homes in rural parts of Karnataka and other neighboring states. The IIT Alumni Impact Study 2008 revealed that 70% of the alumni in social roles are based in India and one out of three are returnees from abroad. Dr. Khanna's Needy Heart Foundation is helping the poor patients to undergo timely heart surgeries in India. Even the patients from neighboring countries are being helped. Some of the patients come all the way from Turkey and Indonesia. I was invited by 14 companies to be there on the board. And whatever money a sitting fee came from these companies, I had given a letter right in advance that should go to this foundation. Five crores of rupees from these companies which came to me and all that has gone to that. So this is how I started Needy Heart Foundation and today 8, 000, more than 8,500 heart surgeries we have done. I have started seeing much larger number of uh, areas that we can impact as uh, as a human society and while right now I am in the area of uh, a commercial business over the next few years I want to actually move to uh, giving back to the society it may be a little early in my uh, age but uh, I definitely want to move into giving back to the society much earlier and definitely in the you know next 10 years as you say I want to be in that field where if I'm able to contribute towards better living in even one aspect of even one town that I come from, I would be quite satisfied. I have set up many greenfield projects from scratch, what we call as breaking coconuts to cutting red ribbons. And I have done it with some of the lesser privileged and disadvantaged people. I have worked with African youth who have done huge business in agri-commodities trade. I am an Indian, I'm a proud Indian. But at the same time, I sometimes feel that given a chance, I like to make even the rest of the places in the world as better places because that's how then India will be a better place. Today, I have initiative where I link 59 African countries with India and I'm promoting entrepreneurship, I'm promoting businesses. These are the digitized uh, uh, environment that we are moving into and that will definitely impact the, the social conditions of these people. And I think in the work that we do, especially in the semiconductor and electronics industry, that's you know where I belong, uh, we create the platforms for delivering these kinds of uh, benefits and schemes to the people in, in the country. See, at some point, time in, some point of time in your career, you realize that, uh, what am I doing for the rest of the people around me, you know, the society around me, the, uh, what is the purpose of what we are doing? And there is an element of giving back that starts. So I focused on creating employment in small towns especially for girls and people with disabilities, so that they don't have to move to cities or migrate to cities. So the idea is to work almost like a Wipro, where I was the first employee, to create another Wipro, but with a different business model. The credit goes to IIT Kharagpur for providing the foundation to thousands of students who are now the problem solvers. So after two years of uh, Infosys, then I joined the police service. Uh, it helped me a lot. What I learned in IIT Kharagpur, in my Azad Hall of uh, Residence, my hostel, it helped me a lot because police is mostly about teamwork and how you communicate with others and how you understand the other person's feeling. It may be a complainant, it may be a criminal also. It's better to understand what goes on in his mind. I think uh, it was very important because they taught us to work hard, be honest, and uh, do your best. And uh, gave us very good education, as well as hands-on and thinking education. And uh, that helped us a long way. And uh, that helped me in my consulting engineering practice also. So. We learn to be better human beings than just technicians. That was a very big achievement, uh, which perhaps no other institute gives. 
But IIT does teach us to be problem solvers. So the first thing that you do is that you can think of something and then you break it down into what the next step is. And I always believe in that old saying that a journey of 10,000 miles begins with the first small step. The journey has begun for the youngsters who are now more than ready to embrace the promising future that lies ahead of them. What I see and uh, kind of vision right now that if I see the map, world map, I look at uh, like IPX, Excel having a mark in every country. That's what I look forward to. Come 2015, after I finished my fellowship with the German chancellors, um, I started and I kick-started my journey with Let's Endorse, um, built my own team here in Bangalore. Um, and the idea pretty much is, is to bring together social innovations, working and most promising social innovations from different parts of the globe onto a common platform so that it becomes very easily discoverable and harnessed by the communities which are there in India. IIT Kharagpur alumni have pursued various career paths and have benefited many countries through their exceptional contributions. Ujjal Mundal, Mohan Mathur, Hussein Mary, Joseph Korean, Lord Bhattacharya, Manilal Boming, Anil Divan, Swami Vigyananand. The list is quite long. In Australia, Vijay Kumar Singhal has done remarkable work in spirituality and the climate change movement. Over the last few years, India has developed an obsession for a high-speed rail infrastructure. The country is already building a bullet train network, and it also wants the Hyperloop. Is there a role that IIT Kharagpur can play in this? Do you, you may be knowing that IIT Kharagpur already has a Center for Railways Research. And one of the thematic areas of the Centers for Railways Research is high speed. And we have been working very silently with the top people in Taiwan and the top people in Japan who work on the Shinkansen infrastructure. And we are the only people in the academic community who has a full course on these high-speed structures, high-speed railway, which will require everything from infrastructure to technology to safety to human engineering and everything built in together. So we, are quite, we have quietly acquired this because we realize that once you bring in this bullet train technology, the number of people that you would require to have knowledge of that technology to not only rebuild on it, operate it, manage it, repair it, is going to be phenomenal. And IIT Kharagpur has been working on this through its Center for Railway Research, which has been funded by the Government of India. Technologies are evolving more rapidly than ever before. In such times, it is extremely important for the institution to be prepared to embrace the future. How is IIT Kharagpur participating in the fourth industrial revolution? The fourth industrial revolution is termed as one which will be driven by AI and digital. So IIT Kharagpur in its 10 domains has digital as its centerpiece. And IIT Kharagpur has, in order to participate in this, we have identified artificial intelligence, IOTs, and safety and reliability. This combination, secure, safe, reliable intelligence systems, as the fundamental basis of our next generation growth. Around this, we are developing centers for transportation, centers for uh, manufacturing, centers for healthcare, centers for smart infrastructure, centers for geosciences for the future of the earth, which are the five technology convergence areas around artificial intelligence and uh, the fourth industrial revolution. And we have got four social convergence areas. These include the future of food, 
These include signals and systems in life science, where we try to understand human, the whole of human sciences in terms of cognitive sciences and everything else that is there. Then we are working on the future of cities. We are building urban observatories. And finally, we are working on a very unique concept called the science and heritage. Indian appetite in research and innovation has been increasing and IIT Kharagpur is capitalizing on this traditional Indian spirit of inquiry and discovery. IIT Kharagpur is not only about engineering and technology. It has successfully addressed one-dimensionality by bringing humanities, social sciences and many other departments in. While playing with cutting-edge technology, it is able to retain the goodness of the old IIT system and is successfully keeping its soul in spiritual India. What are your future plans for the institution? Where do you see it in the next 20 years? The next inevitable plan for IIT Kharagpur is to achieve global excellence. We now need to put our footprint in the map all over the world. IIT Kharagpur is unique. It is unique in terms of many things that students who come into the system and get out of the system become. Their whole life changes. But that has been for Indians who have become global citizens. Now we want global citizens to know about India. We want the first thing that we want to do in achieving global excellence is to bring the world to IIT Kharagpur. So internationalization is going to be a big, big focus for us. By helping to generate wealth dynamically, by contributing innovative ideas and technologies, and by solving world problems, IIT Kharagpur is ready to play a much bigger role. The efforts must pour in from all directions, from Indians, and from Indians who are global citizens. And of course, as you know, once IIT Kharagpur was formed, all the halls of residence were named after the freedom fighters, the Nehru Hall, Azad Hall, Patel Hall, Rajendra Prasad Hall, <coughs> Radha Krishnan, Sarojini Naidu Hall. So these halls again were a reminder of the legacy of these people who had sacrificed so much for us. So in that sense, when I think of IIT Kharagpur as the first engineering institute formed after independence, I feel that we have a special responsibility to India because of the expectations of those freedom fighters who were in those cells that became our dormitory rooms and of Pandit Nehru when he founded it. And that to me is a very special reminder when I go there to teach, for example, at the Vinod Gupta School of Management, a seminar on global trade, tax or social justice, or when my wife works on projects at IIT Kharagpur, we are reminded of that legacy that we need to constantly keep in our mind as we go forward. And that is that, you know, while the young people may feel that they are there because of their own hard work, the truth is that everybody who is at IIT Kharagpur is there because of circumstances that were very unusual. For everybody who was admitted, there were probably 10,000 people who could not get admission. So they have come into their role on the shoulders of many others who could not be there. And in that sense, my message to them is to remember the responsibility that you have to IIT Kharagpur and to India. To remember that many people's expectations are on you and it is not just your success financially or professionally in India or abroad that matters, but what it is that you can give back for this legacy that you are carrying with you. IIT Kharagpur's main contribution has been development of people. It is the people who have graduated of IIT Kharagpur who have been IIT Kharagpur's brand ambassadors, India's brand ambassadors, global citizens who have been Indians, whose simple one word description is excellence. 
from my exhausting journey of more than 40,000 kilometers across several continents, I only saw the tip of the iceberg. It should be quite reasonable to say that without India's IITs, the world that we live in would not be what it is today. By their immense contribution to global prosperity, IITs truly represent India's spiritual foundational wisdom, which focuses on universal familyhood. At IIT Kharagpur, history is being made every day. Its golden legacy and its phenomenal success rate are the driving factors that have transformed it into one of the leading institutions playing an instrumental role in India's re-emergence and the country's grand arrival on the center stage of the world.